So I'm going to cover these topics. Um, I'm going to do them very quickly. But before we um, go into the future, I want to first go back to the fifth grade. Let's go back a few steps. And this was a fifth grader question that I know that you can all remember. OK, we have multiple choice. So what's the answer? OK, so this is not about getting the right answer, because this is really about a conversation I had with my daughter, who's in the fifth grade. And when I had this question in her math book, in her math class, you know what she said? I said, what's the answer to this? She goes, well, Dad, I'm not sure, but I said, well, that's a great answer. That's a great question. I said, do you have any other right question? She goes, yeah, I do. And, and so in, in finance, we're so wrapped up with coming up with the right answer that we very often forget to ask the right question. And so the purpose of this slide is just to get you to think about the right question. Now, I was particularly impressed with the green, the, the warming thing. So I want to walk you back to some other right questions. This is about home construction. Going back to my daughter, I built a home in 2000. And these are some of the questions that I, I thought about. These are the right questions. So why did your parents teach you to lie? My parents taught me to lie. Now let's just go through the scenario. Here we are. We're going to go off to the church or the grocery store or wherever. We're all at the door to go out the house. And what does your mom or dad ask you? Johnny, did you turn off the lights in your room? What do you say? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Meanwhile, you know you didn't. Well, the reason that that happens is because the light switch is a physical control for the light. Why is that the way it is? Look at these. The light switches, why are they in the dark room with the monsters? Does that make any sense? So these are some of the questions I began to ask myself in terms of just the home construction. And so what we did is we actually made all of these different systems interoperable so that they could talk to one another and actually begin to change the entire paradigm of the user experience, which is what Dr. Kenton was just talking about. But this isn't in the future. This is, this, I built this house in 2000. This exists today. I've been operating it for the last seven, eight years. Okay? Now, is it because I'm a green freak? No. It's because I'm an accountant. I'm a CPA, and my operational cost of my house is 50% less than any of my neighbors. In fact, I won a, the house won an award. It was the most energy efficient home built in the southeastern United States in the year 2000. I didn't build it for energy efficiency purposes. I built it for economic purposes. OK? So these kinds of interoperabilities actually change the way controls happen. So this is actually a light switch. But instead of being at waste level, where your physical controls are, it's at eye level. And you can see that it controls more than just the lights. It controls the sound, it controls the temperature, it controls a lot of other things. So the controls go to different locations. They allow you to do more things. The basic idea here, and what I, the point I want to make to you, is that in our world today, in a finance world, the controls are generally physical. They're located with the applications. They're embedded in the applications. If we can abstract those rules and make them logical, we can make them more flexible, more cost effective, and more agile, just like this. So in your home, think about this question. Where's the phone? Well, to you, the phone is a physical thing. In this house, you're looking at the phone. The phone rings. You say hello. Right here is a microphone. Whatever room you're in, the, module, the microphone will modulate to your voice and bring the speakers to bear for you in that room. Now, of course, I have daughters, so they don't like public co phone conversations. So they could go and pick up the phone. But my point here is that controls and, and appliances become different once you've abstracted the rules from the physical layer. Now, what does that have to do with XBRL? Well, I'm going to get to that in just a second. But this is the main point, is that the interoperability of systems gives you more agility and lower operating costs. In my case, less than 50%. And in the case of where XBRL has been implemented around the world, the operational costs drop 50% to 80%. Okay, so if you're an accountant, you're a finance person, we're talking about major numbers here, not things that are just, you know, 1 or 2%. So the major lessons learned in building the house are these ideas. And at the end of my talk, I'm going to show you these same, these same exact things because this is what I'm talking about. 
greater agility, lower cost, you know, easier to do things, less human manual ideas, more automation. All these things are enabled. And they're not enabled in five years. These are things that are already occurring. I'll give you case study examples today. Oops, sorry. All right, let's move on to what is XBRL. So all of these things is what XBRL is. Okay, but very simply, it's an international information format. Now, let's roll back the clock 10 years, and I'm talking to you about HTML, the language of the internet today. Well, HTML is also an international information format. So the impact that you should expect will be about on the same scale. So in 1996, 10 years ago, I'm working in Silicon Valley, and I have a client household software company name, and the, the CFO and I are having a conversation. I said, you know what you got to think about doing is you got to think about putting your financial statements on your internet site. And his reaction was, Mike, are you nuts? You know, we mail our financial report to everybody. They, we don't need to put it on our website. We've got enough transparency. You know, why would we do something so crazy like that? You know, this website, we're not even sure what's going to happen there. You know, that's just sort of a marketing thing. Well, so I said to him, I said, well, look, this is not about the format of the information. This is about the cost of your publishing and mailing that paper report to all of your customers, all of your investors, which, by the way, costs you about a million dollars a year. Well, next quarter, the financial statements went up on the website. So my point here is that this is not about the language. This is about the cost effect of enhanced processes.